I've been saving for. I remember every time. I'm so excited. Okay. You chose to not remember. I now own a house of blood. Every weekend spot. You try. So yeah. Uh, I got a Hasselblad. I never thought I'd own a Hasselblad. Well, I don't know, maybe never is the wrong word, but like, I did not think I was gonna be able to pull this off. But I've been saving tips from weddings and stuff for a couple years and selling off some random gear, and I finally found a good deal on one. And is it the greatest camera in the world? Probably not, but it's pretty cool. And uh, I've always viewed the Hasselblad 500CM and then the Leica M6 is kind of like the two, like two legendary legacy cameras. And as I have two children and would like them to have things to inherit at some point, cause I'm probably not gonna make enough money as a wedding photographer that they're gonna have like trust funds. So they get cameras instead. But with that, I have two kids, so I need two cameras, right? That makes sense, come on, please, please. Anyway. Two steps another. You've got your reasons right My child Don't hold your breath Don't hold your breath I found a good deal on one and I ordered it. So here's a couple of my first impressions on this camera and things that I've learned and mistakes I've made and stuff that, uh, yeah, thought, early thoughts. A lot of people when they first get a, a Hasselblad or something like this, they're gonna have problems using the ground glass. I've been using my RZ67 for a really long time. So that part actually was really easy for me. So in a lot of ways, like as I'm using this, this feels like a lighter version of an RZ, which I'm like, yeah, that, really awesome like that the, this fits in like a small bag a lot easier or it fits in my backpack and it's not quite as heavy um that's super cool also like square format which i love square format and i like getting an extra photo from a roll versus uh whereas you know the rz is 10 photos a roll 12 photos a roll that's pretty cool I also was really excited as comparing this to my Mamiya 6, which though they are both square format, and this is an 80 millimeter lens, whereas the Mamiya 6 has a 75 millimeter lens. In a lot of ways, it feels like I'm kind of like two of the same camera, but this having that 2.8 aperture versus the 3.5 maximum aperture, and that this one just like vignettes, like it's just, this is just a better lens, um, is really nice to have that fall off. And especially if I'm using it in like wedding work, uh, I was really excited about that. Um, so yeah, all in all, I don't know, this thing's super cool. Is it perfect? Probably not. Um, I went to Italy and I was gonna bring a medium format camera. Is this the one I brought? Nope, still brought the Mamiya 6. And so like, I, right now, is, is this my favorite square format camera? No, I think I still like the Mamiya 6. But is this the one I'm gonna hang on to? Probably. Number one, I'm gonna keep this just because it is fully mechanical. Uh, and that was like, it's just gonna last longer. Like I love my Mimia 6, but that thing's kind of a ticking time bomb. And eventually it's either gonna break or I'm just gonna become so scared that it's gonna break that I'm gonna sell it. Whereas this, it's probably not gonna break. And if it does, it's a lot more fixable. And if you ever feel lonely, Ever feeling stressed? Just find my name beneath the rain and find my soul in heaven dressed. A couple bummers about it. There seems to be some gearing issues in one of the film backs I have, and so it 
a couple of photos, especially at the beginning of a roll, will kind of not always fully get to the right balance between them. And also there's just like really big gaps in between the photos. So sometimes I've only had like 10 photos, maybe 11 or 11 photos per roll instead of the 12 I'm supposed to get. So that's a bummer. Also, a lot of the times I got 10 is probably because I'm, I'm, I'm an idiot. But one thing I have learned is that when you're winding, when you're loading this camera, make sure that it's wound before you put the back on. Because you're, as you're spinning this thing, you get this thing to, 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 to one, to be prepared and be loaded. If the camera isn't already there, then you'll wind and you'll basically skip the first photo. Or you can just take the back off, wind it, put the back back on and go for that. Also, one thing that's nice about this over the Mimi 6 is you can do double exposures with this, which super stoked about that because I love me some double exposures. This camera is also supposed to have a timer, but I've really struggled to get that to work right. Um, I don't know if I'm just not hitting the combination of buttons right, uh, but it definitely is like, again, it's a mechanical version versus the electronic timer on the Mimi 6. So as I do a lot of self-portraits and stuff, I do want to get that figured out because I want to be able to use this camera in my self-portrait projects, but uh, I'm still figuring out how to do that. So if you know for sure, comment below, down there, write and tell me how I'm supposed to do that correctly. I don't know. So now that I've had this thing for a couple, half a dozen rolls and stuff, does this feel like this camera is the, one of the two legendary all-time great cameras? Uh, yeah, maybe? And maybe that's one of those things that just like time will tell and it takes a while to really learn to love a camera. Um, but it, is really cool and it's not like it's something that I'm gonna get to for a while and get rid of immediately. Like, it definitely has a place in my heart and will for quite a while. Anyway, thanks for watching, see you around.